Welcome back to Shul Lights. A lot of people know that I'm a big fan of removing the god-awful original emitter that's found in a RR-201. This is the one. It's an Ichia 209C, and it's just kind of green and gross. And putting uh, SW45K, so a 209B, and here's an example of that. Okay. But a customer asked me to do an Osram W1. I was like, yeah, I want to do that. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is, uh, one, I want to talk about the kind of trials and tribulations really quickly about getting a W1 in there. And uh, two, I want to go shot outside and show it to you. Man, this thing is throwy for a small little tiny EC reflector. So um, the Osram W1 here on the right is a 3030 emitter. So it's not the same size as 3535 like uh, this Nietzsche 219B. So you can see that there's a slight gap around the emitter with that gasket. Not a problem though, because I mean this, um, uh, the uh, reflector cinches down fine. It's, it's very well centered regardless. Um, but uh, the trick though is this. When you go to install this in this light, let me uh, show you the PCB that you'd be using. You'd likely be using a MC PCB that is 3030 sized so that it fits perfectly on here. Now, the thing about that though is then getting this MC PCB on this light is kind of tricky because it might be too big. And in this case, this was, so I'd have to grind the sides and do some work. So it's just a heck of a lot easier if you can use the old 3535 MC PCB. Now, it being the wrong size, um, the pads don't line up exactly. So they're off just by a little bit. So what you do, and here's the trick, is you get yourself a diode tester, okay? This little device, I've talked about this in another video, so you can look that up if you want. It's called testing um, you know, your emitters with a diode tester. And you turn and you, you hook it up and it it lights up. Okay, so that's easy. Well, when I did the reflow, when I did on the hot plate, it lit up fine. I was like, awesome. But then I took the negative and I pinched the negative between the negative pad and the back of the MCPCB. And like we're seeing here, it should not light up. Then take the positive, go to the positive and do it again, and it should not light up. And when I did that, I found out that uh, my little emitter actually, you know, had a slight glow. So that meant that uh, on the sides of the diode underneath there, there was a little whisker of solder that had bridged the center, um, the center line, which is supposed to be just for heat transfer um, to the negative. So, or a positive, I guess, in this case. So anyways, um, so that's something to look for. Get a diode tester if you're doing, if you're doing a 3030 emitter on this. But let's go outside and take a look at how this thing looks. It's, it's just really awesome. I just said let's go outside, but I lied. Let's look at the emitter real quick. I think it's worth looking at. So this is a 209B on the left here. Let me turn it on just, well, let's look at them when they're off. Yeah, can you hopefully you can see that this one's domed over here, this one's flat, and this one's got a smaller phosphor area. Let's turn it on just a little bit, get a little bit there, we could get a little bit of a glow, okay, right like that, right? And then let's see how tiny this one is, okay? So, same thing, and you can see it's a much smaller emitter. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that. The larger the reflector gets, while simultaneously the smaller the emitter gets, that equals throw. So you want the smallest emitter possible, largest reflector. So um, let's take them outside and see how these compare. All right, we're actually outside this time. Wouldn't it be funny if I was still inside and said, no, wait, there's something else. All right, so first I've got a my EDC, which is a Hanko here with 519As that are de-domed. This is a Carclo triple, right? And I just want to give you a baseline of how this looks. It's pretty throwy for an EDC. But now let's take a look at the normal 
RRT01 with uh, 209B, and you can see that it's much throwier. It's just the nature of the reflector and everything. Let's do a side by side. So you can see, let's go like, there we go. So you can see how much throwier this RRT01 is in my hand. Now let's keep it on and put the W1 next to it. Look at how small that hotspot is compared to this. Now, if you're looking at that W1 and going, oh, that looks pretty green, that's probably just because this 209B is an SW45K and it's very rosy. So it's kind of shifting it to the green. Well, actually, I'm at low ramp too. This might whiten up. Let's see. Yeah, it whitens up. There you go. Whitens up when we go high ramp. Now, looking up into the air, let's take a look at a beam shot or two. So here we got the 209B, and here is the W1. And you can see the W1 is much more intense and much more concentrated. So that, that's pretty impressive. It's just way brighter. All right, we're outside, final beam shots. On my street here, the palm trees at the back are 110 meters. Let's go with the 209B first. And you can see it's not really making those trees. I mean, maybe, but not convincingly. Hits these foreground trees. All right, let's try the W1. Okay, trees. Oh, look at the intensity difference. And no problem. No problem on those trees. Look at that. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a quick one. But uh, please make sure that you subscribe so that you uh, get notifications on early stuff like this. Also, it really helps out my tiny little channel. My little channel couldn't survive without subscribers and commenting and liking. So I appreciate it to all of you that do that for me. And I'll see you in the next video.